Welcome to doing things the wrong way. <coughs> so you can see that I have this thing reassembled here. You hear some scraping noises because uh, apparently I fucked this one up a bit. Um, yeah, the armature is apparently just as big as the um, no wait stator. Yeah. So <clears throat> even the tiniest bit of offset will cause scratching noises. Although I think maybe this scratching noise is just the bearing shield on the bearing because those <laughs> should not touch the bearing. But because I pulled it off using this one, uh, it is now touching the bearing and making noise. But at least it, there's no clunk 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 anymore. And there's grease in the bearings, which is why it doesn't turn as freely. Now, um, so that was a whole lot of work in getting that back together without a hydraulic press. Would have been way easier with one, or a press in general. So, <clears throat> now this is a three phase motor. I only have one phase. So, what you usually do, you just wire one of the coils. Uh, or well two and use it as a uh, normal single phase induction motor in my case this works to an extent um, but I'm doing something wrong <laughs> uh, so one thing that is really sketchy is this I just this is a this is con making contact so that's where power flows through <laughs> that's bad um, so we have it in star winding so center point is uh, center point is um, yeah well this is the center point then we have coil 1 coil 2 coil 2 goes through the cap back to coil 1 and coil 1 is just without the cap in series so this kind of works there's a problem though either this thing is influenced by the magnetic field of this or it really is pulling 1.5 kilowatts with no load <laughs> which is bad because this thing is only one kilowatt so I'm gonna start it really quickly and then turn down the voltage to 60 volts again <laughs> You see we still pull 150 watts for no reason, but hey, at least it's working, right? <laughs> it's turning. So that's something, but you see it is still pulling 3 amps um, at 60 volts for no reason. Uh, that's not good because the rating on this says uh, 5.2 amps on at 220 volts. Uh, or what was the alternative? 3 amps at 380. This was 60 volts and we were pulling 3 amps. So, yeah, sketchy. I guess this is just because this is a three-phase motor and I'm wiring this wrong or this has the wrong capacity or something else is wrong. I measured the coils. They're fine. Um, so, it, as long as they haven't gone down in resistance while doing this, they're fine. Or maybe... They were all broken the same because they all have the same resistance but anyway so yeah this is this one reassembled with new bearings bit dinged up with scraping noises i think uh, i also mangled the front bearing uh, while beating this thing on so uh, but it's better than before <laughs> that's the the thing so uh, i think i don't know how much the bearings cost like five bucks for both of them so not that much so it was a cheap fix labor intensive though uh, with the wrong tools also getting this thing back on i had to put it in the oven over there heat it up same thing i did for the bearings before i beat them on the uh, rotor um, i had the rotor in the freezer and well i just had to beat the bearings on using a piece of pipe went over it and then beat the shit out of it so that's how I got the bearings on. The back bear, uh, bell housing went on fine. The front bell housing uh, didn't went on, go on so fine. It just, 
yeah, it gave me some trouble, so I tried to beat it, and then I remembered, shit, now the power is going through the bearing balls to the shaft when beating it on the bell housing, so that was bad. Should not have done that. Eh, <laughs> it works, you see, it, it rotates, it doesn't make that much of a racket while it turns. But yeah, so... It kind of works. I can't really test it because I don't have three-phase power yet. Uh, I still have to build that variable frequency drive if I ever get to it. <clears throat> but if I get to it, I have a motor for it, <laughs> which is uh, it's, it's, I think it is getting toasty. Let's just take a quick look on it with the thermal camera, and you can not see shit oh no you can you see the motor housing is warm <laughs> cap itself doesn't even show up but the motor housing got really really warm so it indeed does pull 1.5 kilowatts uh, at 150 volts for no reason um, could also just be because this one is too small or too big who knows uh, this is from the wood chipper motor. I just borrowed that <laughs> and well, clutched it on here, but that works. Um, maybe it is actually too big because this is 40, 42.5 microfarads for this motor. And the one of the pump down here, uh, you can see that uh, here, this one has 22 microfarads. And I think it has the same power rating, if not more. So that is actually a bigger motor, I think. Um, so maybe this is just too much capacitance. You never know. Which could explain why it got hot, because I think the start cap would have more capacitance. But I don't think that this is a start cap only, because the other motor does not have a separate one. Anyway, I have no idea. So <laughs> as long as this thing at least works a bit, and doesn't trash all my equipment, so I can just put it into storage till I have something to drive it. Um, so that's part one of the video. Part two is this thing here, which I will get out of this tangled mess in a second. Okay, now, so this thing is plugged in. Um, still using this as isolation transformer, so I don't get shocked. Um, this thing is a potentiometer that is not in there <laughs> by default. It was included in the package, but I thought I'd just whack this in there, which didn't quite work out because the idiots that delivered this or, well, packaged it, forgot to include the nut for the pot. So I just had to glue it in place and now it's all crooked and everything and I step on things behind me. God dang it. Okay, so, yeah, you see that is crooked on there, but at least it holds for now. <clears throat> uh, this is a 100 volt DC motor, uh, 41 watts it says on here. You might remember this from a different video. Um, so, this thing is supposed to be a motor control. This has input uh, line neutral, uh, F2, F1 is for field windings, that is pure uh, DC, I think. Let's see if we can measure that. <clears throat> so we get this thing out. You can't see this properly, I guess. It'll probably just tip over, will it? Okay. <clears throat> so we go to uh, DC. We'll be all over the place. And you see 260 volts DC. Yes, you do. Okay, so that is the field winding. Um, the thing is, I bought this for my supposedly uh, wood turning machine, which is still sitting over here with this motor on here. This one has field windings, uh, which is, I think, brown and green. And well, it's like two windings, one on each side with a middle wire and the commutator here on the back with the armature. And this is just a uh, temperature sensor. <clears throat> so the field windings on this 
do not take 260 volts. They take like 5 volts and then they still already pull 5 amperes because it's... Uh, I think it's 1 ohm for both of them in series. So each of them is 0.5 of an ohm. So can't really put that on here. Or I would be pulling a lot of amps. What is it? Power is I squared R? No. Um, God dang it. I had the other formula in my head. I think it's u squared over r, uh, so that would be 260 times 260. Uh, that, that is a lot of power <laughs> that would be pulled by that um, wiring for a very short time. Anyway, then we go on with a plus, a minus, which is what the motor is connected to. This is what is controlled by this. Then you have nc for not connected, ground a sensor symbol and 10 volts. This is where I connected the wires from the inside, if you can see that. Like the inside <coughs> go directly to the pot. So the thing is wired up and it's supposedly to output DC. Let's give it a listen. Now you hear it spinning up, you hear it humming. The hum is independent of the voltage. Um, yeah, that's not very pleasant, uh, especially because this is a small motor, and I, I didn't test it yet, plugging it into this motor, but that's going to be very loud, I guess. <clears throat> so, I thought about, hey, maybe I just put a cap on here. There's a problem. Um, well, to be honest, I didn't test it yet. It's just a theory. So, what we have in here is a rectifier. And from the rectifier, it goes directly into two switching devices that are back here. Each of those switching devices is a thing called an SCR or thyristor. A thyristor is a silicon controlled rectifier. It's basically a diode with a switch or a gate. So you can apply some power and <clears throat> it will turn on. The problem is it will not turn back off again unless the current reaches a certain low thresh, uh, threshold. So in this case we have the sine wave jumping up and down because it's rectified so it goes to a zero point every now and then. That's not exactly uh, nice. <laughs> um, to be honest I didn't analyze the output wave yet so maybe it would work just putting a capacitor in there after the rectifier before the switching devices. But the technology tells me, no, that won't work, because the thing can only turn off when you uh, <clears throat> have almost no power going through it. Also, this is a small motor. <laughs> I do not know what happens if this pulls any amount of amps. So maybe this is just under the threshold uh, of the device. I did that with a similar motor, a uh, 230 volt one, and put it on a triac, which is basically two thyristors uh, in one package, and the triac was able to turn off because the thing didn't pull many amps, but as soon as it tried to block it, it did that. But, but this one doesn't fully turn on suddenly, so whatever this thing does, it works. Um, but I don't know if I can add a capacitor without any problems, so I might try that in the future. First I'm going to edit on here to see maybe it just tries to keep the output voltage stable. Maybe, maybe that will work. So if, but then we actually wouldn't hear the buzzing noise. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, I will just put one on here, see if that dampens it or actually gets rid of it completely. If it doesn't, I'll put it after the rectifier. So that means disassembling it, soldering it in somewhere and see if that works. If it doesn't work, yeah, <laughs> not very good. But uh, that's basically my only option at the moment to uh, drive this motor if I don't want to build my completely own circuit with uh, a MOSFET that just does PWM switching, which is, I thought this would be exactly this, uh, so I didn't have to build it. Also, this was kind of pricey. This was 22 bucks from China, so yeah, 
quite expensive but at least it works uh, it didn't blow up on me yet and well I'll see if I can fix that in the near future so this is number two for today's video uh, number three is this little orange box over here which is a stick welder so you can see here is the welding ports uh, cables are over here still in the box <coughs> it says 200 amps I kind of doubt it also it is semiconductor so not that heavy I don't know if 200 amps is right the thing is <laughs> This thing only goes up to 180, it can't turn more. So, yeah, well, China stuff, right? <clears throat> I don't know if I uh, will ever really find out how many amps will flow, unless I put a big uh, resistor in series. Actually, I have one that goes up to 100, so maybe I should just test that <laughs> at some point. Um, so I can do 100 amps. It says 28 volts of output at 200 amps that would be 5600 watts I think is what I calculated so that's a lot um, yeah I also had it apart already just checking uh, if stuff's in place the cable was loose here because this wasn't tightened probably uh, back here and there was no plug included so I just put this one on here and the next problem is there's no grounding wire in this cable there's just two uh, tails so grounding would be over here with this bolt i guess um so i currently have a non uh, non-grounded welder which isn't ideal but eh. <laughs> i might uh, connect that to something <coughs> so yes uh that's number three and I think that is it for this video uh, I got some stuff fixed I also have some new things ordered well not ordered yet I think I haven't won them yet so I have to check up on that but I bid on them on eBay so maybe we get some new things to play with <laughs> even though we aren't even finished with the old ones yet um, yeah N next thing I got a circular saw that's an old one from my grandpa uh, so there you go circular saw and I think that is actually it at the moment oh no one thing's missing where did I put that I uh, have no idea I have a wood plane somewhere maybe you see it I don't ah there it is yeah yeah um, nice little wood plane um, I'm still not very good with it but it works <laughs> so this is it for this video uh, thanks for watching and let's see what the future brings <laughs>